there was a technical problem okay in the previous case settings right so now we'll begin with, uh, with the new things okay um, right so we are going through the requirement specification i told you about that one uh, user requirements functional non functional uh, case of requirements and how do we organize as a software requirement specifications and all that we will see it in this chapter we were talking about the efforts please look into that effort distribution right effort it is nothing to do with the importance okay uh, requirements will occupy 10% of the total effort but they are more important than remaining things importance and efforts are different design will take 20% of your efforts coding will take a 20% of effort and if you look at that the testing whatever we call testing right uh, it takes a 50% of your efforts right now when how do programmers spend if you take uh, the one unit of time right for of a programmer writing a program he uh, spend 10% of time reading a program okay and manuals and all he spend 20% of the time job communication and all 20% and others including personal spending time 50% now look at that how effective we are right and whatever the programming effort that we put in within that how best we can produce right this is about the effort distribution right now when you look at this right triangle of success for the product development right so there are three important aspect that takes you to the success of product development one is a process other one is a notation third one is a tool it is called triangle of success right so you need to have a, a process a systematic way of doing it okay then you need to have a, a tools to do the documentation document all artifacts of your work right then also you need to have a set of notations okay but used in your documents or in your work and all the process notations and okay tools okay all these three when used together uh, then things works better okay please understand this now uh, when you develop a product what is that finally you do okay what is the main part okay things that gets into you need to or when you collect a requirement when you collect a design okay uh, prepare a design or when you write a code what is that you do right you collect the input set all possible input the particular product looks into is something like a catchment area right for as far as the input is concerned right then program takes that input maps to the output right and this input domain if you do not capture as a part of a requirement or a design it means open that some input you might not have captured right uh, if requirements are not collected properly or requirements are stated incorrectly or there are omissions or there are ambiguity or there is inconsistency in the input and all then it may so happen that some portion of the input okay may not be mapped the program might not have taken that one and results into error and this error that it may be life threatening one so please look into we have classified the critical systems into three different varieties right mission critical system safety critical system business critical systems and all right so depending on what kind of critical system that you are building right this erroneous output will be okay a uh, very dangerous one for your business or it could be life or whatever that is there so your requirements this is a area where you will be working requirements collection is the most important thing that will decide whether program is reliable or not program is correct i mean uh providing the, all the services what is required for the user or not so this is the most important thing now uh look problem to be analyzed this is a very important thing as an analyst right what are the different viewpoints that you have on a given problem statements right and as analyst you go through all these things build your own viewpoints build your own stories build your own scenarios right and that all viewpoint scenarios are to be translated into right a proper requirements right please look into that we will go through that so when you are collecting the requirements in our google class also we have written we have given 
that uh, how SRS is to be written. Few examples we have quoted, right? So when you build requirement specification, right, there are important aspects that you may get into which uh, makes your requirement erroneous one, right? One is omission, right? You omit some of the requirements, right? Incorrect fact, you note down the things incorrect and uh, uh, get into the design and implementation. Finally, people will discover that at some point of time and you notice that you have taken incorrectly the input uh, requirements, right? So your entire product is not working as per the expectations. And there's inconsistency. At one part of the report, you say something, another part of the report, you say something else. Simple example is, right, uh, somewhere, somewhere, okay, you are, uh, I'll give about the data inconsistency. Somewhere it says that when your date of birth is uh, 10th September, okay, uh, 1980, and some other place your date of birth is something else. In department is one uh, date of birth, and in uh, office it is something else, right? You, you might have experienced all these things in your online examination. Probably you're not going through the online examination, or some of you people are going through the online examination. Your email ID in a CO is different, email ID submitted by you is different, and email, actual email ID is altogether different, right? You find it is an inconsistency. Are you getting this, right? So there is an ambiguity, right? The way that you interpret, for example, the statements which makes an ambiguous one is, I, uh, the product should respond quickly. What do you mean by quick? Is it within three seconds? Or three minutes, three hours, three days, three months, three years, what is that? Right? A programmer understand that the response should be very quick. He understand that within three minutes and do the coding. And when it's taken to the customer, say that one, no, when I say quick, it is within three seconds. So as a requirement, as a uh, as analyst, you are supposed to capture all intent of the user right, what they expect and all, and resolve ambiguity, resolve inconsistency across the different documentation sections, right, and you need to review so that there are no incorrect facts okay, are taken into account, and you can show, huh? okay, so there are a few students who are waiting outside in the queue list, sir. okay, 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 right, uh, there are some incorrect facts, how do you uh, discover the incorrect fact, right? So when you freeze your requirement, sorry, not freezing, when you collect all the requirement, prepare a report, you need to conduct a meeting. You need to interact with the people, okay, including the stakeholders, including the okay, customers, including your team members and all. Uh, people will discover, right, there will be conflict, okay, uh, in when you conduct a meeting. All the conflict, when you resolve that one, all incorrect facts, okay, can be corrected and all. And it may also, during the meeting, you will discover that there may be some omissions. Though customer has said you are not recorded, or customer might have forgotten, okay, to share those requirements to you all, right? It may so happen. So one of the question, Ashish, you can note down, Ashish and Arpita, you have a, a privilege of editing uh, our in-class uh, question bank. List and explain the various uh, possible types of errors that may happen in requirement collection. These are things, and you need to give an example for all these things, right? So when we move to the next one, uh, some people say that distribution of error, again, this is the statistics, an outcome of some experience of some tortured group and all. Distribution error, 20% error, they come from requirement analysis. 30% error, they come from design. And 50% error come from coding where you fail to translate the design okay, properly into a working system. Right? Design, you wrongly design uh, and it doesn't map to the requirement analysis. And requirement analysis, 20% of the error occur due to your incompetency of conducting uh, requirement analysis, you omit. You omit some of the things. I don't say it's incompetency because the domain is so complex, domain is so voluminous one, right? You are unable to manage 
that particular thing that because of your uh, com i don't say competency right because of the complex nature of that one you omit something there may be incorrect fact and this is due to uh, your incompetency or it could be uh, a customer may not reveal properly there may be inconsistency this is due to our incompetency and there is ambiguity in that because we are not interacted with the customer properly made it very clear okay multiple interactions we are not done again this is due to our incompetency of the analysis that whatever that we do requirement collection that we do the way that we interact with the customers right so that's what is a distribution of error we speak about that this will give a importance now look at that this 20 percent error that happen in uh, requirement analysis are more dangerous they are so costly okay now look at this diagram right cost of correcting error right some error has occurred okay some error has occurred here look at that it is r is requirement design right coding right deployment and testing then acceptance testing and operations this is how the short things are written and this is a cost you can say it is a dollar rupees or crores of rupees lakhs of rupees thousands of rupees whatever depending on how voluminous that particular project work is now look into okay if at all error occurs in the requirement if you discover that correct it that one probably little money you will spend for that and if you're unable to detect that one if at all this error passes to the design phase okay then cost of correcting that error is more than which you could have done it in earlier phase because some effort has gone on this line you have to undo that redo that similarly it's the same error which you could have corrected with 10 rupees of cost and if you are unable to discover gone into the design gone into the coding and gone into the deployment testing or acceptance testing and where at this stage people discover you have to undo all these things come here redo all the things look at that a lot of effort has gone at 10 rupees worth correction in an initial stage you have to pay 10,000 okay rupees that's why in our personal life also as a student right learn everything today if you do not complete your learning whatever that has been covered by a teacher in today's class if you postpone that one that will be very costly tomorrow because you may not understand effort required is more right today when it is a very active and live try to complete in a classroom interaction that's why you need to understand i mean attend the class right you need to focus concentrate once you understand that okay uh, you need not have to put any effort at all otherwise the effort required is okay uh, more multiple times than what initial effort is required it is true for your study also so try to focus this right uh, this is another best uh, diagram that speaks about that right the effort at the initial stage required to correct is 1x if you allow it to go this error at the release time it could be 100x because of the effort already which has gone okay developing on erroneous input erroneous requirement are you getting this right so this is another diagram where people says right cost to find and fix a defect is 0.75 rupees right in a field use if at all you get into the cost is 100 rupees 1 rupee to 100 rupees okay this is the, the another picture that uh, uh, different author project uh, about the benefit of identifying error at the early stage and correcting in that stage itself then question may come that freeze everything and then proceed it may not be possible the real life situations are different you cannot freeze because requirements are going to change every day requirements are going to change every day right so you need to balance between allowing a change to happen and freezing your requirements got it majority of the thing okay will get settled i don't say freeze it gets settled 
there is a clarity there are no ambiguity there are no inconsistency there are no omissions right but the new requirements will come no i wanted instead of uh, okay simply username and password i wanted a otp based authentication of user during login there's a new requirement are you getting this right so new requirements are different right then existing requirement not collecting that one uh, wrongly understanding it not recording that one right that is different right now look at that that's why okay why this is so costly not correcting errors in the early stage and allowing to go to the higher stage because the software product is a complex activity right software is a complex development process is complex right because there are changes in business requirement continuously there are changes in technical requirement continuously there are changes in user requirements continuously right and you are have a developing project plan you have a software models you have got to test procedures and all you have got the code you have got the data you have got many other documents all this you have to do the changes for a small change right any change happens here how do you trace it in all other document do correction and please don't think that uh, product development is something like writing a c program to get a solution for a quadratic equation no right it will be in terms of several thousands of lines of code several hundreds of modules will be there several okay the uh, hundreds of okay uh, you can say uh, components several hundreds of objects several hundreds of tables will be there we are talking about such huge okay complex work got it so managing product development is not simple task this can be compared with you are expert in preparing jira rights right very expert very good at par with any five star hotel right you can prepare for five people but if i ask you to prepare same quality jira rice for 50000 people that is a complexity we are talking right you got a huge project plan you got a huge okay documents data code and all right managing the different versions where which piece is there that becomes a complex talking to a class of 70 student is simple but if you are if you are asked to talk to 10000 people in a public speech and all it is a difficult one you need to prepare for that right you need to adjust you need to manage right so that is a difficulty ness it doesn't mean that you don't know how to speak right but the environment is different that kind of complexity we are talking so that's why object orientation whatever that we have already gone through that helps here to manage complexity hope you are appreciating why object orientation any question at this stage abhishek ashish no sir uh, now at least have you understood okay why object orientation is required okay you can add a question here what is the need for object orientation how does it helps in managing complexity a question can be put ashish ashish is there or not today ashish okay not there not there okay probably uh, okay ashish is not there okay today so we'll call you all people on sunday so that ashish can attend the class okay uh, we'll have a class um, i'll tell you but that will be extra extra in the sense learning is also extra not it right so hope you people appreciate the need for object oriented programming paradigm right then as an analyst so far i have say, uh, said so many things you as a system analyst your role is to build requirement specification properly okay understand build the concept of a system properly right so now let's look into some of the things what is the problem why is it important to solve the problem what are the possible solution to the problem what exactly are the data input to the system and what exactly are the data output 
okay, by the system? What are the likely complexities that might arise while solving the problem? If there are external software or hardware with which the developed software has to interact, interface, right, then coexist, then what exactly would the data interchange format with the external system to be? Oh, a lot of perspectives people have to build as an analyst to clearly understand the whole system. If you grasp all these things, if you understand all these things, if you have a competency to drive all these things, then your requirements will be free from permission, inconsistency, okay, then uh, ambiguity, right, omissions mainly, right, ambiguity is another important thing, got it, right, so this is, these are the questions as analyst you need to remember, it is a role, your responsibility is to get into all these aspects. Now look at that, what are the difficulties? Why is so? Collecting what customer need is so difficult and all? Yes. Right. The reasons are different. Look at that. Okay, this is from your book. Stakeholders often don't know what they want from computer system. Look at that. Sometimes the requirement is, assume that I'm a customer. I wanted uh, my office to be automated. And I want to give a contract to you people for 10 crores for the next two years. You come and ask me, what is that you wanted? I don't know. I want everything to be automated. That's all. And you as analyst, it is your requirement to conduct a meeting, interact with the different okay, end users at different levels, management level, middle order management, employee, okay, and all people. What is that they wanted? I don't know. Right? Because as an end user, assume that I'm I'm running a factory, a mechanical product, a manufacturing, I don't know. I say that one, look, gentlemen, I want this everything to be automated. Right? And the reason could be, I don't know, to say that I may not be in the position to properly put that what is my requirements. That's what is being said that I may find it difficult to articulate what exactly I want it. So the role of an analyst is to help the end users, customers, clients to understand what they wanted. And then you capture, then ask them to validate. Look, what kind of an interesting work you will be doing it. They wanted something, but they don't know what they want. You tell them that you wanted this. Then they say, oh, I wanted this. Then you ask them that, one, is it that what you wanted or something else you wanted? Then they keep on telling the stories. Then you collect what they wanted. That becomes your requirement. Very funny thing. Okay, many times you come across all these things. Right? Many times a customer put a lot of unrealistic demand. As an analyst, you need to tell, okay, there is no feasibility. Okay, you can't, there is no technology that cannot, that can fulfill all these things. Hope you are understanding that. And sometimes look at the second point. Stakeholders naturally express the requirement they know in their own terms. And you need to capture. I wanted a response to be very quick. My own way. You need to interact, remove all kind of an ambiguity. What do you mean by quick? What kind of an output you wanted? How it should look? Is this color okay? Is this layout okay? Is it the performance or time that's okay? Or how you are going to Okay, this to uh, change in next two, three years. Right? Is it going to remain same all the time? Right? So you need to look into all these aspects and uh, work into. Right? Uh, different stakeholders have different requirements. You need to catch all, right, from all stakeholders. For political factor may influence requirements. This happens in, assume that you are developing a software for automating some government office, issuing of some documents, birth certificate, death certificate, or issuing of ownership of land and all. Right? There are many political factors that come into picture that this provision is required, this provision is not required. Right? For their own 
best known reason for them. Let me not put into that. Then look at that economic and business environment in which analysis takes place is dynamic. There are a lot of changes going to happen. So all these things makes difficult a requirement capturing difficult for an analyst right by very nature of all these things right so you need to understand all these things so that's what is being said right why this requirement collection is so important the system is going to close in the next five minutes if you have any questions i would like to address and stop here any questions here any questions any questions as many as 41 students have attended it is a low participation please ensure that all of you appear i mean participate in the sessions because Many of the questions in the examination will not be a theoretical directly from textbook. Right? Simple example, as simple as that. Right? Give an example for ambiguous requirement. Got it? Right? So you should be in the position to give an example. So any question? Or shall I? stop here anyhow look into that um, i have a plan of talking to you people as an extra topic not part of syllabus about uh, uh, the different strategies to realize some quality parameter so that will come as an extra stuff you need to know i'll talk with uh, arpita and uh, uh, ashish you can give all input when, where, how we can have an extra class, right? So for better learning, that's all, right? That's why I have not taken those part in my regular coverage. And I'm also not okay, announcing the extra class date and time also. I'll leave it to you, right? So shall I stop Abhishek? Abhishek? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll stop here this meeting. This third week we have completed, fourth week will begin on Monday. Right? With this, I end. You can put all your questions next time also. I'll end the meeting. Thank you.